Sammy wrote, uh, love is lovelier the second time around. Well, so are certain guests, like the funny lady who appeared on my very first comedy chat show here at the BBC, and who can not only sound just like Margaret Thatcher, she sometimes makes a great deal more sense. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Janet Brown. You look lovely. I love the way you come on, like a little girl coming to a party. Do you know what I was just thinking? I was just thinking as I was walking down those steps and coming across you. Yeah. Of course, I walk just my way. But when you think of all these Hollywood stars and the way they walk on, can you imagine if Joan Collins had been here tonight? I'd, I'd give you an idea. I think she would have done it like this. What are you gonna, oh, I see just, this just a minute. This just is a Alexis Carrington yeah, making I think her she would have entrance. Walked, I think she would have done this. She's a sort of miniature Bette Davis, isn't she? Yes, yes, yes. I think she's, she's picked up some of those characteristics. From Absolutely. Bette Davis. You look marvellous. Thank you. You were on the very first show that I had here at the BBC, and you introduced us to Joan Rivers before we'd ever Joan... met her. Oh, I'll she never her... forget that. Oh, gosh. Because when I came out here, I said to you, of course, the audience didn't know about her at all. Nobody knew her name. And I said she tells these terrible Britain. stories about the royal family. She's so rude. And she does terrible things about other people. Jane Fonda, she's got to be a millionaire. A millionaire. She's got to be. Wait, oh, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Oh, please, oh, grow up, grow up. She didn't get that beautiful body from exercise, and she got it from lifting up all that money. Oh, oh, please. Oh, please. Can we talk? Can we talk? Can we talk? She's a marvelous character. She came on my show four weeks later, and she was so yeah. nervous making her debut yeah. for, the, for the British. You, you travel, you're never so scared of audiences. I mean, you're going back to Australia and New Zealand. Yes. I know you, they love you there, but. Do they know well, that... it's exciting because you, don't, you just don't know what to expect. I mean, you don't know who they know, for example. Right. What about your friends from Coronation Street? Oh, They're... I can't leave them behind. They're famous in, uh, down under. Eh? Hey, what? They're famous in Australia. Aye. I'd like to take him with me. He'd be nicer than my lodger, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what about neighbours? Uh, neighbours? You have to go with Hilda. Oh, well, I... Well, I've spoken to... Well, I've spoken to Rita about it, but... You never know what those Australians get up to down on the <laughs> oh, oh. Are they really so far from fans in Australia? Well, you see, the difficulty is, I think, when I went out there last year, I just didn't know who the Australians did know on television. And, of course, sometimes they're rather far back. I mean, when you think of Dallas and all the lovely characters and that, mm -hmm. Sue Ellen. Right. Well, of course, uh, she used to have that lovely long hair. Well, now she has short hair. I don't know what she'll be like out in Australia, but I do know one thing. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, Bob. Sue Ellen? I, uh, I just want you to know. <laughs> I just want you to know that I'm, I'm not drinking anymore. Of uh -huh. <laughs> course, I'm not drinking any less. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to take her with one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to have her with oh, me. Oh, dear. Yeah, I'll do it. I think everyone in the world envies you, your ability to, to do all these voices, to produce them out of thin air. Oh, I, I love doing them. I, I have great fun at them. But what about you? Come I on. Do I don't keep it a little secret. We all know you can do a beautiful Groucho Marx. Oh, well, everybody thinks yeah, they can do yeah, Groucho Marx. Come on. Trouble is, you can't do Groucho, I don't think. You can do Groucho on his own, because all his best lines are bounced off that marvellous oh, Juno-esque lady. Oh, Ma that great tall lady who absolutely dominates Groucho. Margaret Dumont. Margaret Dumont. I tell you something, for fun, why don't you do your Groucho Marx, and just for fun, I'll be Margaret Dumont. Well, if you'll be Margaret Dumont, Groucho, you want it. I want it? You've been reading those police posters again. Firefly, I welcome you with open arms. Is that so? How late do you stay open? Perhaps you would care to dance. I could dance with you till the cows come home. Second thoughts, I'd rather dance with the cows till you come home. It's annoying. Not that I care, but where's your husband? Why, he's dead. I bet he's just using that as an excuse. I was with him until the end. I held him in my arms and kissed him. Oh, I see. Then it was Moya. <laughs> Will you marry me? Did he leave you any money? Answer the second question first. Why, he left me his entire fortune. Can't you see what I'm trying to tell you? 
I love you. <laughs> you won't make it rude to me, will you? If I say your face is familiar, we're practically strangers who still look familiar to you. I remind me of someone. You really do. Three guesses, too. Your lips, your eyes, your hair. I'd know you anywhere. Cause you remind me of you. The moment you made me Don't try to please my haunting face And if I look like you My face would haunt you too I understand now I remind you of me Are you agree? Your laugh, your smile, your frown My frown? Without or with your gown Without my gown? I know you upside down <laughs> If you've got a double, you're both in trouble. <laughs> Don't try to deny. <laughs> you must be you. There can't be two. So much like you, you are. <laughs> I don't care who you are. <laughs> you through and through, you are. If not, then who? <laughs> you're one of a kind. You know you have three cavities. <laughs> 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 <laughs>